Hi, mom. How many years have you been healthy? I... I'm back. Naomi? Naomi? Is this some kind of sick joke? Who the hell is trying to trick me? It's not a joke, mom. It's me. Your daughter. Naomi. Oh, cut the crap. No one would be twisted enough to play such a tasteless prank. That ungrateful girl would never have the guts to reach out to me after her despicable actions. Mom, please believe me. This is not a joke. I've come back to make things right. And what about Austin? How is he? You. Are you really Naomi? Where the hell have you been hiding for the past 10 years? Yes, Mom. It's really me. I'm back to take responsibility and make up for Austin. Responsibility? It was you who ran away from home at 15, chasing after that bastard, despite your father and I pleading and forbidding you. You yelled at us, claiming that your life was your own responsibility, and then you had the nerve to dump your son on my doorstep two years later with nothing but a piece of paper with his name and a half-assed apology, only to vanish for another decade. Mom, I was just a 17-year-old back then, filled with unfulfilled dreams. After giving birth to Austin, if I had stayed and taken care of him, the whole town would have known I had a baby. There would have been no chance for me to grow, to pursue my dreams. So I thought if I left him with you, he would have a better life and I could chase my own ambitions. That's the most idiotic, selfish, and heartless excuse I've ever heard. There were countless better options than abandoning your child, than denying any responsibility. Are your dreams the only thing that matters? Does your son's life and happiness mean absolutely nothing to you? I get it now. That decision has haunted me and tormented me with guilt for years. I can't sleep at night knowing I missed out on Austin's first steps, his first words. I ache to hear him call me mom. But all that pain has fueled me to work relentlessly, to succeed in my career and build my wealth. And now I want to go back and make amends for all the lost time and experiences Austin has suffered. Do you have any idea how sad and guilty he must have felt all those years? Do you think he needs your money? What he needs, what he's always needed, is a mother's love. Despite his grandfather and me showering him with love, as he grew older, he realized he didn't have parents. He questioned if it was his fault if he wasn't good enough. You shattered his innocence, his sense of self-worth, and you think you can just waltz back into his life now? Mother, I understand. I love him too. No. You don't understand a damn thing about that boy. You have no clue about the depths of his pain when he was mercilessly mocked at school for not having parents. Don't you dare utter the words, I love Austin. If you truly loved and cared for him, you would have found countless ways over the past 10 years to reach out, to visit, to write letters, to send even a damn birthday card. But you did nothing. I understand that I deserve every scathing word you throw at me, but you need to grasp the desperation I felt back then. I was trapped in abject poverty and Austin's father, he was arrested for drug trafficking and robbery. I was terrified because there was no money and his godforsaken gang members would come knocking, demanding payment for the drugs he lost to the police. I couldn't leave Austin there, exposed to the brutality of those criminals. So I made the agonizing choice of leaving him in your care. Then why the hell didn't you come back home? I was young, foolish and paralyzed by fear. I was afraid that returning would only confirm what people already believed about me, that I was nothing but talk, incapable of taking responsibility. That fear consumed me, condemning me to a decade of isolation and guilt. You're beyond foolish. Family is meant to be a sanctuary, a refuge even in the darkest of times. You have no idea how much Austin yearned for his mother. A few years ago, he had an accident while attempting to climb onto the roof chasing after the stars, believing they were your watchful eyes. He slipped and ended up hospitalized, in a coma. But with his rare blood type, RH Null, the hospital had no reserves to save him. Even in that coma, he begged to see his mother. Thankfully, they found a blood donor and saved him. But that haunting image of his suffering still haunts me to this day. Is it true? Austin has the RH Null blood type? My god. This is incredible. My son finally has a chance at a better life. Thank God. What the hell are you talking about? I mean, I'm grateful that Austin survived. It seems like he genuinely wants to see me. So, I'm asking, can I please meet Austin? 
I want to spend as much time as possible with him. Is school almost over? Where does Austin go to school? I need to know so I can pick him up. What? You want to see Austin? Absolutely not. I won't allow it. Why not? Austin and I both long to be together. Why are you hell-bent on tearing us apart? I won't let you hurt Austin again. I don't trust you. Who can guarantee that you won't hurt or abandon him once more? Perhaps you'll show up once only to vanish again. You'll give him a glimmer of hope, only to crush him, and he'll suffer through the agony and self-blame all over again. I won't let my precious grandchild go through that again. No, mother, I promise. Please give me a chance to make up for Austin's emotional needs. I would never do anything to hurt him. I'm his mother. What kind of mother abandons her child not once, but twice? Please believe me. This time I will stay with Austin, and you can't make decisions for Austin. Can you at least ask him if he wants to see me? You. Fine. Let me talk to him tonight and see if he wants to see you. If he does, I'll text you later. Right now I have to prepare supper for Austin. He'll be home from school soon. Yes, that's fine. Can you please hurry? I, I can't wait to see him again. Where is Austin? Why haven't you brought him home yet? It's almost his bedtime and you're keeping him away from his own home. I brought Austin to my house and he's asleep already. I think he got tired in the car after a fun day of playing. He wanted to be with his mother tonight and I couldn't deny him that. Did he really say that? So, what did you two do today? You know, we did all the things Austin wanted to do with his mother. First, we went to a baseball game to watch his favorite team. And guess what? Austin even caught a ball. <laughs> he was so happy laughing the whole time. Baseball? That's so strange. What's strange about it? What kid doesn't love baseball? Not Austin. He's usually not very interested in baseball. He's more into basketball. His dream is to become a professional basketball player. Well, maybe just being able to watch a game with his mother made him happy enough. After that, we went shopping for clothes and lots of new toys. He was thrilled. And I have to say, he looked incredibly handsome. Yes, I know that. After lunch, we went to see the latest Transformers movie. Austin couldn't stop talking about it afterward. Then we had dinner at a fancy restaurant. He enjoyed his meal and we had great conversations. And he insisted on sleeping with me tonight. <sighs> it sounds like Austin had an amazing day, didn't he? The boy must be so happy. This is all he ever wanted, to meet, play, and talk with his mother. I'm genuinely happy for him. It seems like you've truly committed to taking care of Austin, aren't you? Yes. From the moment I saw Austin again and heard him call me mom, I knew I had to be there for him and make up for the time I missed. All right, I understand. So just leave him there tonight and tomorrow morning your father and I will come pick him up. But remember, if you hurt him even once, you'll regret it for the rest of your life. Actually, there's something I need to tell you. My job in Florida is going really well and it's my lifelong passion. I can't just give it up like that, so I knew it would be like this. Are you planning to abandon Austin again? How dare you do that to my grandson? No, Mom. Please try to understand. I can't bear to give up Austin again. I love him more than anything, and now I'm finally in a position to provide him with the life he deserves. So, Mom, I want to take Austin with me to Florida. What? Are you out of your mind? You want to tear Austin away from his family? Florida is over 800 miles away. Do you realize how long it could be before we see Austin again? I absolutely cannot agree to this. Mom, I know this is difficult for you and Dad to accept, but it's what's best for Austin's future. This is ridiculous. How can you think it's best to uproot Austin from everything and everyone he knows? His friends, his school, his entire life is here. But in Florida, I have a beautiful, spacious house waiting for us. There are top-notch schools with state-of-the-art facilities. And remember Austin's dream of becoming a professional basketball player? There are renowned training centers there that can give him the best chance at success. He'll have opportunities he could never have here. I have poured my heart and soul into raising Austin for the past 10 years. And now, after just one day, you think you can come in and take him away from me? No, Mom, that's not what I want. I appreciate everything you've done, but deep down, you must want what's best for Austin too, right? I promise to bring him back to visit you and Dad regularly. We'll make sure he stays connected with his roots. You can call him, video chat with him, be a part of his life even from a distance. Don't you want what's best for your grandson? So, 
Have you even talked to Austin about this? Yes, I have. He's excited about the possibilities and he, he wants to come with me. Well, if that's what Austin truly wants, I can't stand in his way. So, when are you planning to leave? Tomorrow afternoon. Why so soon? Can't you wait a little longer? Austin needs time to prepare and say goodbye to everyone. I'm sorry, Mom, but I have a crucial business commitment in Florida. I have to get us there as soon as possible. I promise we'll come back to visit soon and Austin can have a proper goodbye with everyone then. Fine. If you must go, then go. But remember, Austin needs his family. Don't let him forget who loves him and has been there for him all these years. I won't, Mom. I understand how important family is. Good night, Mom. I have to go to be with Austin now. Good night. Take care of my precious grandchild. Naomi, you heartless monster. How dare you inflict such pain on my innocent grandson. I swear I will make you suffer like you've never imagined. You're not fit to be called a human being. You're a vile, despicable creature. Mom, why are you texting me so early? It's only 5 a.m. I was asleep. Asleep? How can you sleep peacefully when you've shattered Austin's world and left him in agony? Are you so devoid of compassion that you can rest easy? What in the world are you talking about? I, I don't understand. What has happened to Austin? He's still at my house. Let me check on him. Oh my god. Austin is gone? Where could he have disappeared to? Are you pretending to be clueless? Are you acting like you're in a panic because you're afraid Austin is missing or are you trembling at the thought of him exposing your heinous deeds? What the hell are you accusing me of? I genuinely fear for my son's safety. This is not the time for arguments. I need to find Austin immediately. Of course, you're only concerned about protecting your own twisted secrets. You're worried that your son will lose his blood reserve, right? You don't have to keep up this facade of being a loving mother to Austin. It's all a facade, a web of lies. Austin is right here with his grandfather and me. He poured out his heart and revealed everything. What? Austin is with you? How is that possible? And I still don't comprehend what you're insinuating. Austin is my son. What do you mean by reserve blood source? Stop pretending, you wicked witch. At 1 a.m. this morning, the Florida Police Department called me. They discovered my grandson wandering alone in the dark streets. They took him to the station and asked for the contact details of his family. The police informed me that Austin seemed mentally traumatized and had numerous bruises on his body, suggesting he had been subjected to abuse. They urgently summoned me and his grandfather to come and identify him. We rushed to the airport, desperate to reach Austin. And when we met him, he spilled his heart out. It's horrifying. Absolutely gut-wrenching. What? What did that brat say? You know damn well, you heartless monster. Austin confessed that ever since the day he met you, you didn't take him out as promised. Instead, you subjected him to a battery of medical tests, including blood-related examinations. When he questioned you, you lied and said it was to ensure his bloodline was pure and healthy. And when Austin expressed his desire to come back home with us, you twisted his innocent heart. You told him that I had sold him to you, that I saw him as a burden, and that I despised him, never wanting to lay eyes on him again. Austin believed your wicked lies and reluctantly went with you, feeling abandoned and unloved. It shattered his spirit. Austin is lying. He's throwing a tantrum because I refused to buy him a new PS5. He ran away from home and concocted these horrendous accusations to tarnish my name. Do you honestly think I'll believe you at this point? Austin has never asked for anything so absurd. He's an incredibly obedient boy. And if he wants something, he'll do chores around the house to earn the money and buy it himself. Even if your ridiculous story were true, how can you possibly explain Austin's current state? He has become visibly thinner and weaker in just three days under your care. His hands are covered in needle marks and bruises, as if he's been beaten. Don't even try to suggest that Austin did this to himself. That's the most ludicrous explanation in the world. Oh, that's actually a pretty good story. <laughs> the bruises are from basketball. Yes, Austin has been practicing basketball. Maybe during practice he collided with other boys and got a few bruises. You're being overly sensitive and protective of the child. And the injections? Are you sure they're injections? Maybe they're just bruises from playing sports or something. Oh my god, who are you trying to fool? I was a nurse for 40 years, Naomi. 
How could I not tell the difference between a bruise caused by an impact and a bruise from a blood injection? Moreover, Austin told us that you never let him go to basketball practice as you promised. Instead, you locked him in a room with the windows and doors sealed shut. Every day, a doctor would come and draw his blood with a needle. He was in excruciating pain and begged you to stop, but you refused to listen. You even beat him when he refused to eat anymore. You told him that if he didn't have this rare blood type, he would be worthless. What? It's probably because Austin has been watching too many horror films lately and it's affecting his imagination. It's all because I've been too lenient and haven't paid enough attention to him. Where are you now? I'm going to pick him up right away. Ugh, I can't believe he could come up with such horrible stories. <laughs> Do you realize how ridiculous your excuses sound? You're a drowning dog, desperately trying to survive. Deep down, you know whether those things are true or not. Stop pretending. We already know that you're married and have another son. That baby is very ill and requires a large amount of blood for transfusions. Since he shares the same rare blood type as Austin, it's been challenging to find enough blood donors. So you schemed to steal my grandson to save your other child's life. What? How do you know about this? Austin overheard you and the doctor talking outside his room. He said that although he wanted to help his brother, the blood drawings were agonizing for him. So he waited for a moment when nobody was looking took the key to the window and escaped during the night. Fortunately, he used bed sheets to create makeshift ropes to climb down safely. But he didn't know where to go because he didn't know anyone around here. And because he believed I despised him, he wandered aimlessly until he was helped by police officers. No, no way, that ungrateful kid. I've been taking care of him for three days now and this is how he repays me. I just want to take a small amount of his blood, but that's not okay. What a selfish kid. Ungrateful? How dare you call Austin ungrateful after what you've put him through? Taking a small amount of his blood? Are you serious? You hired a doctor to extract his blood daily, pushing him to the brink of physical and emotional collapse. You're delusional if you think that's justifiable. Austin is your biological son, for God's sake. How could you sacrifice his well-being and jeopardize his life to save another child? You're no mother. You're a heartless monster. Don't you dare. Compare that insignificant filthy rat to my precious son. Austin was nothing but an unexpected outcome of my reckless youth. He was just an accident, a burden I never wanted. But the child I share with my husband, he's different. He's the embodiment of our love, the most precious thing in my life. So why shouldn't I give up something inferior to save my own son? If it weren't for his blood type, I would have never bothered returning to deal with that brat. I can't believe what I'm hearing. You see your own child as inferior? You see Austin as some disposable object while you worship your husband's child as a divine creation? How can a mother differentiate between her own children like that? Blood type or not, every child deserves love and care. You've lost all sense of compassion and morality. Spare me your lectures on morality. You wouldn't understand the choices I've had to make. It's easy for you to judge from your high horse. I did what I believed was necessary to ensure my family's future. You think you can get away with everything, don't you? Well, not this time. I will make sure you pay for the pain and suffering you've inflicted on Austin. I'm going to sue you for child abuse, and I'll make sure the authorities know all the details of what you have done. You're just trying to ruin my life. You can't prove anything. Austin's words won't be enough to convict me. Oh, believe me, I have evidence. I have Austin's medical records, documenting the daily blood extractions and the bruises on his body. I also have witnesses. The Florida police officers who found Austin wandering alone in the street, frightened and injured. And let's not forget the doctors who will testify about the physical and emotional trauma he endured under your care. You're bluffing. You can't take my son away from me. <laughs> your son? Don't make me laugh. You lost any right to call yourself a mother. Austin deserves a safe and loving environment, not the torture you put him through. I will fight tooth and nail to protect him from you. You think you can play the hero? Well, go ahead and try. But remember, I have resources, power, and influence. I won't let you take my son away without a fight. I don't care about your resources or your influence. I will do whatever it takes to ensure Austin's well-being. You may have money, but you can't buy love, compassion, or the bond between a child and a true parent. Mom, please. I'm begging you, don't do this. I know I've made terrible mistakes, but I love Austin, I really do. I never meant to hurt him like this. I was desperate and I thought I had no other choice. 
Begging won't help you, Naomi. I'll see you in court, and justice will prevail. You will be held accountable for your actions, and Austin will finally be free from your grasp. I made a terrible decision, and I regret it with every fiber of my being. I was desperate to save my other child, but I see now that it was a selfish and monstrous act. I've never realized the depth of my actions until now, and I'm filled with guilt and remorse. As time went on, the truth about Naomi's horrific actions became undeniable. The authorities were alerted, and a thorough investigation was conducted. Naomi was arrested and charged with child abuse, kidnapping, and other heinous crimes. The evidence against her was overwhelming, leaving her with little chance of escape from the consequences of her actions. As the investigation progressed, it was revealed that the doctor responsible for taking Austin's blood had indeed been acting unethically and endangering the lives of others. The evidence against the doctor was strong, and their actions were deemed a gross violation of professional ethics. The medical board thoroughly examined the case, and the doctor was subsequently stripped of their license and permanently barred from practicing medicine. Meanwhile, filled with both anger and relief, I focused on helping my beloved grandson heal from the trauma he endured. With the support of us and professional counseling, Austin slowly started to rebuild his life. He found solace in his family's love and the comforting presence of his newfound brother. Austin's brother, still in need of blood transfusions, faced a difficult journey ahead. However, Austin, touched by his brother's plight and motivated by their shared blood bond, made the brave decision to become a donor for his sibling. His selfless act saved his brother's life and brought them closer together than ever before. As the years passed, Austin thrived in a nurturing and loving environment. He grew into a resilient and compassionate young man, guided by the lessons learned from his painful past. Supported by us, Austin pursued his dreams and discovered his true potential. In the end, despite the darkness that once overshadowed our lives, our family found happiness and strength in our unbreakable bond. We emerged from the ordeal stronger and more united, cherishing each day and the second chance we were granted.